Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. State Media Concepts Sex Podcast. I'm your host, John Johnson. I'm, I'm going to launch into this. I was talking to uh, a friend of mine recently, and they were just commenting on, you know, they've, they've had a number of relationships, but, you know, over time, that is. And they were just commenting on how there was an old lover. It seems like old lovers are always a temptation. Why? And the question is, why are ex-lovers such a big temptation? I mean, they are ex so it would seem, okay, I wanted to kind of tear this apart and ask that question. It, I guess it would just, on the outside, seem like, okay, maybe the sex was good, but the rest of the relationship wasn't. I mean, does that mean the relationship was one-dimensional? No, it doesn't. I think it transitions things. You know, you go, you meet somebody over a period of time, and you grow apart. You know, that's you know, that, that's sort of a hip shot. That's a quick explanation for it. It seems like oftentimes the relationship lasts as long as it did because of the sex, because that's sort of the maintenance that you do on a relationship, trying to buy time to make it last to work on the other parts. But if you lack the skills, let's say communication or, or anything else that you might need in a relationship to make it work, then, you know, sex is only going to be around for the time it's around. But, you know, you have good memories surrounding that particular activity and people like to do it over and over again just like i guess if you like baseball and you even if you lose you still want to go back and and play and have fun so it, it's it just strikes that part of of the of the mind in the human beings but you know that was always a big temptation and, he, and i wondered why if that's the case then you know what does that say about the current state of the relationship that you're in i mean you know if you are not in a relationship and you know, if you're monogamous, so so let me start from that premise. If you're a monogamous person and, and okay, so let me back that up. If you are in a relationship and you're a monogamous person, you probably should not have your thoughts on an ex relationship. Yeah, there were good memories, but I mean the temptation part, you got to learn to keep your focus here and not be all over the board. Now, if you're not involved with somebody, then, you know, your mind is kind of free to roam and, and there's probably no, uh, not too much harm going to come from that. But I think I wonder about somebody who has a difficulty see, being able to focus because once, uh, you know, you don't put somebody in jail for what they think, but you do have to exercise some sort of self-control and discretion lest you keep be see, uh, being single. You stay in that status and start recycling lovers over and over. And at some point in time, you are going to be alone because you will just have the look of, huh, I can't trust you or your reputation will be out there, you know, because what happens to most people, they, they kind of travel in the same circles over and over. So if this sounds like you and you are having difficulty with uh, keeping somebody or people don't want to be around you because you seem to have a reputation, well, I guess you got to work on that part. But back to the idea of the the temptation and I don't doubt the, you know, curiosity about, well, what would it be like now? Because, you know, when the relationship was happening and, and it was going on, you were at that part, that place in your life. And maybe you've done some growing up and you would like to have a, say a do over or a revisit uh, of some type. 
So one of the things that you're going to have to ask yourself if you're doing this is, you know, why do you need that validation? Because oftentimes when we're revisiting something, we, we want to do over, we want to change the history of that. We want to have a different kind of experience as if, you know, we couldn't leave well enough alone, what, whatever well enough is, you know, maybe it was a bad experience because it was just a bad combination and you've learned from that and you grow and you move forward. But there is this tendency we have as human beings is we want to rewrite our history because when we have an experience and it's not as good as we'd like it, sometimes we want to fix it. We want to fix it. That's just the, that's that part of us that wants to tinker with things. And sometimes that's, that's a good thing. Like I said, if you've been, you were at a different place in life, you were young, immature, and you needed some growing up to do, and you've now moved the clock forward and, and you've done some growing up and you've had good memories with that. And you wanted to revisit that. So you can, like I say, rewrite your history. It, it is a big temptation. And I, I would think it's more than just the sex though. I, I think it's that experience that you had with that individual. Maybe they made us feel good and everything associated with that. Um, that, that's, that makes things like that desirable, but you, but you have to look at things when you're, trying to do that, uh, rewrite your history. And I'm going to use that expression. When you're trying to do that, you have to see that that's from your perspective. There is the other person and what changes have they made? Like I say, there may be temptation there. That's just, you know, firing on all cylinders. But when you put that out there to that person, and what if they reject you? Are you going to be ready for that? Some people aren't. Some people do poorly with rejection. And I would have to ask that if this is an experience that you are having, that's, that, that's your experience. That other person may not want to rewrite their history with you. So my advice to that person who had been contemplating all of this, because I could tell from the level of conversation, they were in fantasy land. They were not really in a place where they were ready to deal with the rejection or the responsibility. The two R's I call those the rejection responsibility because trying to make, trying to rewrite your own history is like I said, it's a wonderful thing to be able to do when you can, when you've grown up, you've learned some things and maybe, you know, maybe you want to, to apologize for something that you did in the past. You know, that's, that's a wonderful reason to kind of revisit some things when you want to, uh, to elevate this and and make this better but just doing it for the sake of doing it uh, oftentimes that's usually a waste of time and a lot of people want to engage for that so if you've had that thought then consider my advice and, and this commentary about that uh, another something that came up is what to do when you have an angry lover well th this is basically a communication problem Sex is but one of the things you do in a relationship. And if you're not getting any and you've determined that, hey, my lover is angry, then you're going to have to to do an investigation here. You're going to have to ask questions. You're going to have to be open to the conversation as it comes about. And I think the you're going to be vulnerable. You got to be vulnerable to hearing what is coming out of the other person. So. Here's one of the things that I think relationships in general need to have, and it is a plan of action for when you're upset. I think we learn these things about our, our, our person of interest, our lover, when things happen. But ahead of time, and I'm really talking about before you have a fallout, have a plan of action, just like you would of anything else. When you know that your partner is upset, You've talked about this is what we're going to do so that there is no question about what we're doing, because if you're the type of person that needs your own personal space when you're upset and it helps when your partner knows this, that way they don't try to rush in and start asking you a bunch of questions when you're upset and angry or, and may say it in a way that just comes out all wrong. Or maybe you haven't even had a chance to process how you're feeling. You see, if you create this plan of action that says, hey, I'm going to need a half a day or a day or something like that, then we sort of create our own rule book. And, and I think couples should do this. You create your own rule book. And by establishing your, 
your method of dealing with the upset, then things are going to go a lot smoother. And I'm going to talk about that a little more when we come back from the break. Stay tuned. Hi there, it's John who is hosting this sex podcast and I am partnering with Care Of. And Care Of is a subscription service that makes it easy to get vitamins, protein powders, and more, which are personalized just for you. And here's the great thing. They are delivered straight to your door. And I'm going to share this with the winter coming to an end. You know, I think it's finally time to get back into a routine that's going to empower you to feel your healthiest. So look, give yourself a boost and whether you're looking for energy, better sleep, or to maintain the stress or give you something else to help you feel the healthiest, Care Of's online quiz will ask you about your diet, health goals, and lifestyle choices. And, you know, that part only takes about five minutes. So you'll find out your personally, scientifically backed recommendation for vitamins, protein powders, and a lot more. So the online quiz is now new and improved. And this is what helps you learn if you are getting enough protein and fiber and good fats to determine if you could benefit from care of's new protein powders. Now, it can be really hard to know what vitamins or supplements that you should be taking, but care of makes it easy to find out what you specifically need to be your healthiest. Care of delivers daily vitamins and supplement packs along with protein and more, and they're all customized to your recommendations. So you're only taking what you really need. Your personalized care of subscription box gets sent right to your door every month with personalized daily packs. And they're great for a busy on the go lifestyle. And get this. They even say your name care of's delicious nutrient packed quick stick powders can be added to your monthly delivery for an extra easy boost whenever you need it. So I want you to experience the care of difference. And they also now offer protein powders in individual packets for the on the go and they're also in tubs. Then they're, again, all personalized to your fitness goals and dietary preferences. Care of makes sure you're getting vitamins and proteins from the best sources backed by an honest guidance and transparency. Care of's new protein powders have clean labels and are made with organic ingredients like cocoa and Himalayan pink sea salt or whey from range-free grass-fed cows from Ireland. Vegan and vegetarian supplement options are available to match your dietary needs. And you can also track your progress with the Care of app. And get this, you can earn rewards when you remember to take your vitamins. So check this out. And here's one more thing. And this is specific to my show. For 30% off on your first Care of order, I want you to go to Take Care Of, that's one word, T-A-K-E-C-A-R-E-O-F. Dot com. That's takecareof.com and enter relationship 30. Now that promo code is going to get you 30% off your first order from care of. So again, here it is takecareof.com. So you go on their website and enter relationship 30 and that's going to get you 30% off your order. So go there, check it out. I think you'll like what you see. And that's why I'm partnering with them to get you another option for better health. Remember, TakeCareOf.com, enter Relationship30 as a promo code. That'll get you 30% off. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. to Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast. And when I left off in that last segment, I was talking about how you can create your own um, plan of action. So when the sex quits, and believe me, it's going to happen. If there's an upset in the relationship, it affects a lot of stuff. And one of the things that tends to go is the sex. So you need to create your plan of action on how you're going to get um, deal with the upset. Because most people just tend to do this by feel. And by that, I mean... You watched your person, your partner blow up. What do they do? 
Do they give you the silent treatment? Do they kind of go off and do their own thing for a while? Well, it's kind of nice to talk those things out. And I know we tend to do that over time, but I'm talking about putting this in the front part of the relationship, like when you're doing the courting process, because when you wait to where there's a fight to try to figure this stuff out, it usually goes wrong for a long time. I mean, there are times that once in a while, I think people get the urge to want to have sex. So what are they going to do? They start to break down, they give in or, or something like that. I think a lot of times there's a lot of compromise and, and you know, maybe that's one of the good things about sex because when you want it, you pretty much will do whatever it takes to get it. But I, but does that solve the problem? Because if it doesn't, guess what? We're going to be back here. We're going to be doing the same old thing, but it's about learning how to give people their space so that when you know that this is what's going to happen, I know that I'm going to get a few hours or whatever it is I need to calm down and to then be able to come back to it and have a conversation about it so we can solve it. This is what makes the relationship go forward. And why is that important? Because you get back to lovemaking. That's the tie because I know, and because I've been there myself, when your love life's not right, then 90% of your life just isn't clicking. I mean, you can have other stuff going well, but when the love life is not working, it is a huge distraction. So here's your template. What you're going to do is you're going to have this conversation. And this is something that you're going to implement when you see that, that there's trouble brewing on the horizon. We're going to say we're going to call it plan one. So when you call this out, you both know where you're at. You both know how much time you're going to give each other. And you're going to learn how we can have a conversation about this without blowing up. We learn that we're going to be listeners first and then we'll talk. So, you know, somebody has to call it. Somebody has to declare it. And you two decide how that works because oftentimes, and especially in relationships where you you have two type A individuals or, or two non-type A's, somebody has to take the lead and you have to have an agreement around how that's going to work. Because if you don't, then, you know, two type A individuals are always in a power struggle. And then two people who are probably a little more passive, nobody takes the initiative. So this is your template. You're going to figure out who's going to take the lead. And then from there, you can re-engage at some point. But you figure out how long you're going to take apart. Because here's what that does. That at least gives you both an idea that you are going to come back to it and discuss it. And if you're one of those individuals, and I'm one of these kind of people that likes to talk about it right away, at least you don't feel so um, ignored. Because when I can't get into the conversation to find out what's going wrong, because I'm a fixer, that that's that's kind of what I like to do. I like to fix things. But when I can't get into the conversation and figure out what's going wrong, then I get real anxious and probably a bit annoying because I keep trying to, to pick at it, to, to work at it. And some people just need to be left alone because they need to calm down. And, you know, I, and again, you have to work this out and you do it ahead of time because when you try to, to, to work on these details, when you're upset, most people aren't in the right frame of mind. But when you have a roadmap for how to get through this, it really actually speeds the process up. And, and I don't mean artificially. I mean, because you already know what you're going to do and you're going to feel better about it when that kind of thing happens because then it's quicker to resolution because you have to figure that both of you don't want to be upset. You want to get back to having sex. I mean, that's, that's one of the pleasures in, in the relationship is being in that motion and being loving, being felt like you're cared about and, and, and all of that, everything leading up to it. Most people anticipate that and they, and they love having that. So, the less time we spend arguing about it, the more time we get to spend doing it. So use that as a motivator. How about that? Uh, you know, something else I'm going to tackle, and I'm going to just kind of mention it here in this segment, and I'll pick it up uh, after the commercials when I come back, is interracial sex. Now, it's not new, but the topic itself comes up if simply because of the perception that people have seen kids who are of mixed ethnicity, uh, they, they seem to be, look very exotic. That's pretty. And... People like pretty babies. They are driven by that. So what do they want to do? They want to meet somebody else of a different culture. They find that there's some physical chemistry there. And, you know, you do that long enough, you're going to have kids. That's just kind of how it goes. But with that becomes a much broader acceptance of this because we see some of the things that come out of it is when there's the blended cultures 
there's more acceptance. There are more discussions about it. And then it seems to say, jump back a few generations, meaning when maybe something that our parents were not very comfortable with, but when their kids come in and the kids are you know pretty independent these days, you know, they go back and tell their parents what they're doing. And sometimes it gives them an opportunity to revisit their own views about, uh, you know, how they felt about something. Maybe they weren't very strong, but they just operated a certain way. And with the opportunity to revisit this because it's been brought into their experience again, maybe there's a little more acceptance. So look, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to come right back. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more. Stay tuned. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The DSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Hey there, welcome back to Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast. I'm John, your host, talking about sex. So when I left off, I was talking about how now we are having more of a blending of sexuality from different cultures and how when younger people tend to have an easier time of it because they see it. It's in their it's in their experience. But older people have their social constructs and which they tend to stay in their own lane. But as the younger people tend to expose older people, either because they're grandparents or their parents and the, the, the younger people bring their friends home or you see pictures with their friends and they have romances with their friends, it sort of broadens the, the acceptance. And I say it tenderly because some people have had a, a curiosity about somebody of a different culture they didn't venture out of their lane, so to speak, but now it's more accepted. So as we broaden our, let's say our social network, and then we find other people more interesting or because maybe because it's just simply new, then you know we develop relationships with them. And what happens next? You develop a closeness, intimacy follows, and next thing you know, you know, you're accepting the person for who they are, and you didn't so much see color or something like that, at least not now. You just appreciate them for appreciating you, and, you know, their sex. That's how we get there. That's generally how we get there. And for what it's worth, having those experiences with somebody of a different culture sometimes introduces you to something a little more exotic. I mean, and it could be that fantasy that people have that finally gets fulfilled because I know personally, and I can say I, I know of uh, a dear friend who was, I would say she is in her seventies and in her younger years dated men who were of a different culture. She always had an attraction to men who were of a different culture. And I think what happened is in her experience, they were, it was a man of a different culture who respected her and, and treated her well. So that made it sense 
that she would be attracted to them. Now, one of the things that happened for her is that she was a very strong personality and she knew who, how she wanted to be treated. This person treated her well. And fortunately for her, she was strong enough in her personality that she didn't care what other people thought. Now she did this at a day in time when there, there was a lot of taboo around dating somebody outside of your race. You know, so what would happen is a, you would get the odd looks, you'd get the sneers, you get people that would say things behind your back. And it might've been very difficult socially to really deal with that. But fortunately for her, again, like I said, she was strong enough, uh, in terms of her personality that she endured that. And she had nothing but good things to say about it. And uh, and it's interesting how, when you can be a a voice of reason, a voice of logic around a, a topic like that, that could be very incendiary that, you know, around your friends, they have their curiosities and, you know, they would ask honest questions and yeah, they might start out making, you know, kind of side jokes about it, but really get interested. And when it comes to being treated well, or say having good sex and you find out that this is what the possibilities are because of something is a little more exotic. Now, granted, it could be the flavor of the week for you and then yeah, and, and you might not want it anymore, but at least if you've tried that, and find that is something that was totally, totally blows your mind. So you've opened yourself up to a new experience. And I encourage people to experience someone of a different culture. I mean, aside from the sex, I mean, you're going to get there. I mean, if you spend enough time with them, you're going to get there. Um, and, and for that reason alone, it might be worth the journey. Reaching back to the conversation that I had with my friend who's, who's experienced people of a different culture. She's, she's had no regrets. And I think for what it's meant to her to have experienced life in that way, her life has been so much richer because of it. She was not afraid to be herself every single day. And it led her to have a lot of experiences and to meet people. And all the guys that she met weren't lovers. Some were just friends, but they accepted her. She accepted them. And like I said, her life has been so much richer. She's able to reach out to people of a different cultures and feel love and give love. And I think that has been one of the reasons she's had such a, a well traveled life and has lived a long time. I mean, everybody can't be rich, but everybody has an opportunity to be nice to someone and have a good experience. And she's done that hundreds of times over. And I've had the pleasure of being able to talk to her and learn something about her life and the men in her life and how much they also revered her. And that's what's made her special. And to feel that she was cared about in such a way that made being with other cultures such a wonderful experience. And I can talk to at some degree about some of the lovers that she's had. She was open enough to talk about that and why she felt very free and uninhibited in her day and time. And she's lived in some places where people weren't very welcoming of someone of a different culture or someone dating outside of their race. Now the, she's in her mid seventies now. And so you can tell that if you turn the, the clock back a number of decades and imagine how rigid people were in their thinking and not necessarily welcoming of someone who wanted to think outside of that. Well, Hey, she took it on when it was a, not the thing to do, but she's also benefited from that. And at this day and time, there are people that have a lot of love for her because of the woman she has been, the person she is, and the person she will always be. So to all the men and women who are courageous enough to step outside of their comfort zone and to become familiar with someone of a different culture, uh, as and if you stick around long enough that you become lovers and, and have a great relationship, I'm happy for you. And for those who find that that's not something that they're comfortable with, you know what? It's everybody has their preferences and their choices. There's nothing wrong with that. But given the opportunity to experience something that's different, you know, whether it's different food or, or different music, there's no requirement that you have to fall in love with somebody of a different culture. I think I'll be it. This is the sex podcast. And I talk about lovemaking and I talk about how people come together. Sometimes just the experience of being around somebody of a different culture is great. 
and you can get introduced to things in in palatable ways, small ways that allow you to to experience it and and have fun with it. So I hope this has been interesting. I'm John Johnson. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, and I want to thank you for joining me in this journey. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, part of the GSNC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsncpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast.